in here have a box, which needs to be zoomed out on, I guess, from a listener. His name's Bill. He sent this to me in hopes that I can do something uh, positive with it for my project in home education with Linux, specifically OpenSUSE, and seeing what I can do with this, uh, this hardware. This hardware is the same as some other hardware he sent to my co-host on Linux Out Loud, Wendy, so she got a similar thing. So excited. Here is the machine, very nicely packaged. So much packaging in there. Here's the machine. Now the question's really gonna be, oh, look at that, see? It's like a tablet slash laptop. This is gonna be fun. So the trick is gonna be, how well will this open SUSE? I think the plan was really to use open SUSE Leap, but I'm gonna test this thing out with open SUSE Tumbleweed to see how it goes. Apparently there's some issues with the trackpad not working right out of the gate. Something has to be done on Grub to make it recognized. I don't know. Uh, I'm gonna find out and see how this thing how this thing does. When I get a new piece of hardware, I tell myself I'm going to use it just as it is before I monkey around with it. In this case, with this Fujitsu laptop, it didn't have an operating system on it, so it's up to me to install a thing. Since I have an almost unhealthy obsession with the OpenSUSE project, and as such, I like to see how well I can stuff the OpenSUSE joy into a piece of hardware, regardless of its age. This laptop, tablet convertible hardware, has so much potential, I had to see how it would run OpenSUSE. OpenSUSE is touted as the maker's choice distribution that runs on numerous hardware platforms, so it should be able to run on this humble Fujitsu convertible. The question I want to answer by the end of this video is, how well does it OpenSUSE? This computer was a kind donation from a member of the Destination Linux community, Bill. Thank you, Bill. It is a Fujitsu Lifebook T725 that was manufactured on or about 2015 uh, based on the documentation easily available. The BIOS release date on my particular machine is from the 8th of May, 2015. There are several features that makes this a compelling machine. Firstly, it has the ability to be a, a laptop or a tablet. The screen will rotate in either direction with stops to prevent it from destroying the data transmission cables within the pivot point. This is a smaller size machine, but it does have some thickness to it to accommodate the optical drive as it is a machine from another era. This machine has within it the Intel Core i5-5200U CPU running at 2.2 gigahertz, Mesa Intel HD Graphics 5500. This has one DIMM slot, so system memory is upgradable to 12 gigabytes, four gigabytes fixed, eight gigabytes on the card. For storage, it has an SSD, in this case, 480 gigabytes. And it is nice that these are easily accessible because I think it's silly when computers do not have easily accessible slots for upgrading memory or storage. As far as ports go, there are three USB slots, one on the back, then one on either side. We have HDMI and SVGA, two 3.5 millimeter jacks, one for headphone, the other for microphone. Your power port is on the left side. Kensington lock on the right, a real ethernet port, and the ability for a dock station. The touchpad has two physical buttons. The internal screen resolution is 1366 by 768, 16 million colors. There is a stylus for this machine, but I don't have that piece to test it out. The touch screen on this is pretty fantastic, but more on that in just a bit. As it is fairly obvious, I have installed OpenSUSE Tumbleweed. There aren't any special configurations for it. I have three partitions, EFI boot partition, a 7.63 gigabyte swap partition, and all the rest for the operating system and data. Once I installed this machine, I did a couple things. First, I changed the theme to my OpenSUSE Breeze Dark theme. Then I installed the multimedia codecs in terminal. 
I have a video on that process if you'd like to check that out. Then I did the, an on-screen keyboard. A problem with Plasma is they don't actually offer the on-screen keyboard within the desktop. Sure, on login, they have access to that, but not within the desktop. It'd be very nice, it'd be very slick. But for now, I'm using the onboard, on-screen keyboard. It leaves a little tool in the system tray, so you can turn that on and off, but the interface isn't great on, on that. I had to determine, once I had this machine, what I would do with it. It is a fine piece of hardware, so where would this computer fit into the ensemble of hardware that I have around me? I decided the focus of this machine wasn't going to be gaming at all. Well, not a focus anyway. The whole purpose of this machine is to make home education a bit more efficient by having a dedicated system with ample performance to do all the various educational activities. I would also prefer my kids not use my laptop because, well, it's mine. This computer has been in service doing this task for almost three months, and here's what I've installed. Scratch 3. It's fantastic for the kids to learn to do programming visually. PyCharm, although we're not actually using that quite yet. For geography and also studying world events, I added Marble, which is great with this touchscreen because I can move things around very nicely, zoom in to wherever I need to zoom in with my fingers. It's easy for the kids, and they rather like it. So, very useful during certain world events. Another great application I've installed in here is G-Compress. It's great for the younger ones. It has a lot of different basic things to learn there, and it really is pretty well done. As far as keeping data on here synchronized for memory work, I have sync thing running. I installed Chromium on here because I wanted the kids to be able to have their own browser profiles for filling out specific assignments with our school partnership. Now, what's really nice about this machine is because of that whole tablet thing, it's nice to be able to grab it and sit on the couch, get out of the home education room, and just do a thing on this instead. Which brings me to the battery life. This is by no means a new machine, but Plasma does report it having 91% of its battery health. And for many of the activities we do, it's they're not real power intensive. So this thing will last several hours on a charge. I did say that playing games is not a priority for this machine, but I did want to uh, test a few things. One of my favorite games of all time is Descent. So I wanted to see how uh, playing a little bit of a Descent would go for uh, for this machine. So let's start a new get out of that. Really, not bad. I mean, not the greatest. I mean, 60 FPS, I guess it's good, you know. So definitely able to play a 30-year-old game without a problem. Although it has been updated. One of the favorite games of, of the kids they like to play this from time to time is Tux Racer. So I had to, you know, check that out. How how easy, how well does it play? Enter, it's practice an event. One of my favorites here. Who says penguins can't fly? I remember the, I remember the first time playing this game on a the Pentium 4 machine. Anyway, lots of fun to play this. If you haven't tried Extreme Tux Racer, uh, it's still fun. And who says, who says penguins can't fly, huh? Another game that is fun to play. When I first started playing Linux, Armage Tron. If you've ever watched the movie Tron, this is basically a ripoff of the whole um, bike thing from that. So it's fun to play. Uh, you get at least a few, a few hours of, of fun out of it anyway. I always, I don't do so well in it. I don't expect to be doing any kind of real serious gaming with this machine, but fun games like Among Us are absolutely in the realm of possibility. Now life isn't all roses with this machine, and I'll show you how it isn't. 
So I have this thing in tablet mode. It it works fine. I can I can do things with it. I can open up Firefox. I can browse the web as as you would. I'm gonna go to type something in. If I want to search for something, I have to bring up this keyboard here. And, and really, it works okay. That's fine and dandy, you know, if I want to read something. But, but the issue is, if I want to go and rotate the screen, because I want to, you know, hold it in, in portrait mode, well, it doesn't automatically rotate. So I thought, well, I could probably go into the settings here and rotate it. Hit apply. Look at that. Now it's rotated. Except, except the, the matrix doesn't line up correctly. So now that won't work. It's a nice attempt, I guess, but that's just not going to work. So if I want to go in, how do I, nope, oh. nope. Oh. There, now I can apply it. So where's, nope. Nope, 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 nope. There we go. So that's uh, that's kind of annoying. Having an on-screen keyboard that, that works a little bit nicer, I can deal with this, but it's just not great. There, there isn't a good plasma solution that I found as of the making of this video. I'm sure that it's out there someplace, but there's not one that you would experience similar to an Android phone where it would move things around. You can do the typing and then make it drop back down, stuff like that. Like you can, you know, zoom in and such real nice on this. So that, that, that works that works well. But as far as other input, it's not great. This is a snappy convertible computer. It's great for use as an educational device. This thing gets regular use in my home education room. It makes trips to other rooms at various times. What would make it better? Auto rotate of the screen and touch input. To answer the question, how well does it open SUSE as a general computing device? I give it four out of five Geekos. There is no auto rotate. Manual rotate causes the touch matrix to be out of sync, causing a kind of detached experience, and the on-screen keyboard is just not ideal. So there is an on-screen keyboard here that does exist within Plasma, but it only shows up here at the login screen or the lock screen. But it isn't available within the desktop environment itself. If this could be exposed while using it as a desktop, like you would expect on a smartphone, this would change the experience of Plasma on the tablet mode from okay to absolutely fantastic. But as it stands today, it makes for a great touchscreen laptop that is only okay in tablet mode. That said, this is a fantastic little computer that works smashingly as a general desktop computing device. Thanks for watching.